exciting. Fresh is on. Good luck, mate. Good luck. Yeah. Now then, here's Sister Wendy giving Phil Tufnell another arts masterclass. Mm. And I'm not sure that Phil's strange animal impressions halfway through are entirely appropriate, but you can judge that for yourself. Normally, Sister Wendy shows me great paintings, but today we're going to be looking at something different. Stained glass became an important aid to worship in the 12th century, when windows were used to tell Bible stories and relay the stories of the lives of the saints. Take this window here in Christchurch Cathedral in Oxford. It depicts the story of St Martin. People would have known that because of the cloak, the sword and the beggar which represented Christ. The medieval congregation would have got it straight away. Today, many of us have lost the ability to read these symbols, but I know someone who certainly still can. I'm meeting Sister Wendy at St Mary's Church in Ifley to explain the meanings in some more modern examples of stained glass. This is the Don Piper window. People may know him from Coventry Cathedral. He did that great cascade of glowing glass in the window there. But this, I think, is his most beautiful window. It's called the Nativity window. It's all based upon the Tree of Life. Yes. Can you see it? Yes. It doesn't look like a Nativity scene. There's a wonderful old legend that on Christmas night, the animals can speak. And you can understand why that's a legend, because it made such a difference to the world that Christ should come. So naturally, everything changed. Right up at the top, you've got the cockle, and he's saying, Christus natus est. I can't do it in cockerel language. <laughs> in cockerel language, yes. like, Christus natus est. Yes. Good, good. <laughs> okay. And that is, Christ is born. Christ is born. Christus natus est. And then the, the goose, he's saying, quando, quando, when, when. I can't do duck no, either. No, but... Quando, quando. Oh, yeah, that's a quando, quando, quando. Right. And then. <laughs> The raven, yes. he says, in hoc nocte, on this night. Now, you do it in raven. In hoc nocte. Good. That's in a very good raven language. Yes. And then the owl says... Well, we can do owl. Ubi. 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 Where, where? Where, where? Ubi. And where is answered by the sheep who says it's in Bethlehem. Oh, that's easy. You do it? Bethlehem. That's right. Bethlehem. So they're all having a little conversation to each other? Yes. And notice they're announcing it out to the world there. He looks happy chap at the top there, doesn't <laughs> yes. he, the cockle? He's really having a good sort of crow, isn't he? Well, let him. He's got the big message. Yeah. Christus natus est. Christ is born. Sister Wendy's next choice is The Flowering Tree by Roger Wagner. This is the death of Christ, when the tree of life came to its fullest flowering, because you can see Jesus is that flowering tree. Yes. And they used to call a cross a tree, but here it is literally a tree, a tree that's burst into the most beautiful blossom. So it's both Jesus dying for us and giving us life and rising, because you can see that's full of joy, it's not a suffering no. picture. It's almost like it's sort of bursting into life, an explosion. Yes, that's a good thing. And then underneath, you see, there are sheep. The sheep represents us. Yes. And then the great river of life flowing very strongly from the tree. Yeah. It feels alive, doesn't it? It, yeah, it does is alive. It feel like it's sort of moving almost. Well, see, that's what light does. That's why light is the symbol of God. Yeah. It comes through and shows us clearly the meaning and the beauty of creation and redemption. It all speaks so strongly to actually living a, a, a life as, as I do, a life that wants to be close to Christ. So it overwhelms me. Words really aren't, aren't enough. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Well, there you have it, yeah. all the animal noises. It you